see an adult in yep. person. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, hi there. I'm here today with the largest lizard we've ever tried to film in our studio, and this is Norbert. Norbert comes to us from Utah's Reptile Adventures, which is a, a really awesome organization. They do reptile presentations, and they keep some really cool animals. Norbert is one of them. And you can check out Utah's Reptile Adventures also on YouTube, and we'll have a link to their uh, YouTube page down in the description. Also, you can check them out on Facebook, and they've got a website, so just Google them. Norbert is a Nile monitor. And in my personal opinion, the Nile monitor, it's at least like in my top three, maybe my very favorite looking monitor. And monitors might be my favorite looking lizards. I mean, they're not as crazy looking as, as like say a leaf-tailed gecko or chameleons, but when it comes to just something that looks like a freaking dinosaur, monitors take the cake and the Nile monitor, in my opinion, is the coolest looking of them all. For starters, this is an African monitor, like the Savannah monitor, but the coolest body shapes of the monitors, I think, are had by the Asian monitors and the Australian monitors, the Goannas. Um, the Nile monitor has very much got the basic body plan of a lot of the Asian water monitors, especially the Asian water monitor. Uh, it's got this blade-like tail, which is just glorious, and just kind of that, that longer neck. But the head shape, which is honestly the thing that I like the least about uh, the Asian water monitor. I actually think they've got a great head shape, but it's almost too small. The Nile monitor has still got that African monitor burly head, and Oh my goodness, I love that. Plus, their coloration is among the most beautiful of all monitors, and they tend to maintain it into adulthood. Like, I have a Dumeril's monitor, which is an Asian monitor. Very similar, but much smaller than these guys in terms of body plan. And they are gloriously beautiful as babies, but they really dull out as adults. I still think they're very cool looking, but not as beautiful as a Nile monitor. When it comes to just looks, the Nile monitor maybe my very favorite. I like them more than Komodo dragons, I like them more than crocodile monitors, they're just insanely gorgeous. Hey, here Norbert, how you doing? I should mention during this whole video that I am trapped in this chair. A lot of people have mentioned how startled I looked during the iguana video and that was because I was very startled. Uh, it takes me a long time to get out of this chair and uh, if the animal decides to come at me, I'm in trouble. So you've noticed today, for the first time ever, I'm wearing leather gloves. And the thing about Norbert is he is an absolute sweetheart, uh, especially for a Nile monitor. I probably don't have anything to worry about, but if things go south, I'm in a heap of trouble back here, and these leather gloves are all I've got to save myself. <laughs> Nile monitors are also literally the size of velociraptors. Um, which is very cool in a lot of ways. Velociraptors were a considerably smaller dinosaur than what was depicted in Jurassic Park. That was actually probably Deinonychus. It was supposed to be Deinonychus in both the book and the movie. Uh, Velociraptor mongoliensis is a considerably smaller dinosaur, and it is literally the same size as Nile monitors, which is cool, but uh, maybe not when you're keeping it as a pet. I'm going to tell you this right now. Now, Norbert is a rare exception. Generally speaking, though, the Nile Monitor is one of the worst pet reptiles you could possibly get. And that is mostly because they get huge. I mean, Norbert here is as long as our table, and he is not anywhere close to as big as these guys can get. They can get bigger than this, and they will almost certainly hate you. They're also full of weapons, and they're very, very active, very fast, very aggressive animals. They'll also cost you a fortune. It's just a horrible pet reptile, but it is one of my favorite lizards in the entire world. Overall, we give the Nile Monitor a score of 1.8 out of 5, which is um, maybe the worst score we've ever given an animal. 
Uh, and that is despite the fact that they're way too common. And that will come down to our, for the first time ever, gloved five categories, which are handleability, care, hardiness, availability, and upfront costs. When it comes to handleability, we give the Nile Monitor a score of one out of five. We're not giving it a zero because it probably won't kill you. And that's the only reason it's getting any points at all. With an excessive amount of work and a little bit of luck, like we see here with Norbert, they can actually be pretty good. The same is true for iguanas. But, more likely than not, they will not be nice at all. And, and even if they are nice, like iguanas, they've got huge, sharp claws that will just tear you to shreds while you're trying to hold it. And that's if they're being nice. And uh, the main difference between these guys and iguanas is just that the claws are bigger. And, well, just as sharp. Uh, you could definitely get stitches on a regular basis from your interaction with a nice Nile monitor. Now on top of that, most of them are not nice at all. And they have got a lot of big and extremely sharp teeth. And they'll also whip you with this tail. Now, I'm not as... I would actually like take getting whipped by the tail any day over bitten by a Nile monitor. Uh, they can shred you. My, my main suggestion if you decide to handle your Nile monitor, especially when it is larger, uh, will be f first uh, start handling it when it's very small and never, never, never stop. And then also just make sure you've got really excellent insurance. These guys are frankly uh, more dangerous than the green iguana. Uh, kind of a similar amount of rage, more athleticism, uh, and better weapons than a green iguana. And they're a lot bigger. When it comes to care, we give the Nile Monitor a score of 1 out of 5. It's basically the exact same enclosure that you would need for a caiman lizard, which are stinking rad lizards, and we have a whole video on them that you should check out. Uh, you're going to need a huge area for climbing, a huge land area, and a huge area for water. It's just these are much bigger and much more active than caiman lizards, so take that already prohibitively enormous and expensive enclosure and just make it many times that size. And, and that's all you'll need. They've got a very fast metabolism, as most monitors do, and uh, a colossal, absolutely gargantuan body. So they're going to eat a ton, a ton of feeders, just a, an enormous amount of feeders. So that's going to get pricey and just difficult to keep on hand. They will eat really just about anything that's uh, ever tried to move around. Any, any sort of animal, uh, alive or dead, that they could potentially swallow or tear apart and swallow, they will probably try to eat it. This is going to include things like insects, rodents, eggs, fish. A balanced diet, just as many different things as you can offer, would be the best for them. They are very willing feeders and they will eat lots of different things, so one thing to be aware of is just keeping their weight in check. It's easy to let your Nile monitor get really obese and uh, that's not going to be very healthy for them at all and they are prone to that. So this is a really healthy weight that you're seeing right here, but you see some Nile monitors that are the same length and weigh four times as much. They're going to need a basking spot. It doesn't need to be as hot as a lot of other monitors require, but just given the size of this monitor, you're going to need a ton of different basking bulbs and UVB bulbs, and that's going to be very expensive, and you're going to have to keep replacing those all the time. Plus, you've got to make it so that the monitor can't get to them. Large monitors often like to get up and into their lights, and they can burn themselves and break the bulb. The bulbs explode, so you're going to have to build something around that so that they're close enough to the monitor, that they provide enough heat and the UV can get to the monitor, but that they're protected from the monitor because the monitor will try to get at them. You're going to need, like I mentioned, essentially a pond, a fairly good-sized pond. It's going to need to be heated and filtered. Uh, given that complete water changes are going to be very difficult and these guys are going to make a mess in the water. They're also going to need places to dig, so you're going to need deep substrate that won't cave in on them, kind of hold its form. And, and they're kind of messy, they're messy animals, they're, they're tearing things apart, they're uh, defecating in the water and potentially on land as well, and it can be difficult to get in and clean things up because they hate you and they're fast, real fast. An iguana hates you too, but you know, it, it's not going to chase you down as quickly or from as far away as an angry Nile monitor will. Quite frankly, 
Nile monitors are more difficult to keep than many crocodilians. When it comes to hardiness, we give them a score of 3 out of 5. Most of them are farmed imports, and as a result of this, they're going to come into, well, wherever you are, dehydrated, emaciated, and probably full of parasites. Definitely plan on a vet trip with your baby Nile monitor to make sure you get that all taken care of. Even with proper veterinary care, there's a decent chance that your baby Nile monitor will crash. However, if you can get it to survive in those early stages, or especially if you can get one captive bred, they should be fairly hardy and, and pretty robust lizards, given proper care, and that is something that they almost never receive. When it comes to availability, we give the Nile monitor a score of three out of five. These guys are frankly entirely too available. Uh, this is probably the second most available monitor lizard, at least in the United States, and that's absurd. Uh, we've already covered the most available monitor lizard, which is the Savannah monitor, which is a terrible pet lizard, largely just because it's really difficult to give them proper care, and you need a lot of space for them. This lizard, on the other hand, is just in a whole other league of terrible, because uh, they're much bigger and much angrier. So. This is a horrible pet lizard for almost everybody that gets them, and yet they're widely available and, and available inexpensively, and that's a huge problem. They're going to be at most expos. I mean, I, I've been to expos where I've seen individual vendors that have 25 Nile monitors, and I can guarantee you that there are nowhere close to 25 people at that expo that are prepared for a Nile monitor. I would be surprised to find there's more than one or two people at that expo that could really handle and would want to handle a Nile monitor. I mean, I, I see these guys in pet shops that are available constantly online. It's because you don't have to breed them, you just import them. And anything that you can import in droves, there's almost no work there for you. You sell them for a little bit of money, it's a quick score but it really sucks for whoever buys it. When it comes to upfront costs, we give the Nile monitor a score of 1 out of 5. The lizard is way too inexpensive. Uh, these guys would probably be like, I, I, you know, I would probably say these are almost a good pet lizard if they were like $3,000 a piece because that would make it so only people who are like really financially prepared for what this lizard is going to be like would buy them. But the problem with them is they're like 50 bucks. After that $50 expense to buy the lizard, that's when things go nuts. The enclosure that you're going to need for a Nile monitor is insane. Okay, it's just insane. Uh, the, the Cayman lizard enclosure is prohibitively expensive and large for almost all reptile keepers. It's just too big, too complex, too expensive. This is that same enclosure, just way bigger way, way bigger. This is th this monitor to be kept properly is going to need at the very least a room in your house. Probably more than that. And part of that room needs to be a pond and part of it, it needs to be tall, it needs to be full of climbing branches, it needs to be full of substrate, it can dig in. This is just an insane enclosure and mind you, you're not probably going to be allowed in there because the velociraptors will attack you. That scene will happen, right? You'll be there putting your hat up on top of a log and BAM! Nile monitor. Uh, in a, so you're going to need to keep, you know, not only do you need to have a pond, but that pond needs to be heated, it needs to be filtered, you need to be keeping track of water quality. It's, this, is, this is a crazy endeavor, okay? And then you're going to need tons of expensive lights for the basking spot. UV lights and basking bulbs that are going to need to be replaced on a regular basis. Frankly, you're probably going to need another job just for your Nile monitor. And for these reasons, the Nile monitor gets an overall score of 1.8 out of 5. This is essentially a pet velociraptor that loves to swim and climb trees. And having a pet velociraptor sounds awesome, and it probably would be really awesome for like a few hours. But uh, we've all seen Jurassic Park. Seriously, this is one of the worst pet reptiles you could possibly get. In, in very many ways, they are worse than green iguanas. Uh, I mean, they, I would absolutely recommend green iguanas over Nile monitors. The main reason that I was probably even more harsh on green iguanas than I am on Nile monitors is because people have no idea what green iguanas are like. People have some idea that Nile monitors 
are challenging, expensive, and aggressive, but they really, really are. They, they've earned that reputation honestly. Many people have responded to our iguana video that they think that I hate iguanas. Or they, they also think that I think that it should be illegal to get an iguana, or that I'm gonna try to ban iguanas. And they're probably gonna think that I think the same thing about Nile monitors. So I wanna be really clear. I love green iguanas and I love Nile monitors. They're actually two of my favorite animals on the entire planet, but they are both just terrible pets. You shouldn't get one. Do I think that it should be illegal to get one? No, I don't. Do I recommend them? Not at all, not to anybody. Sort of like if you walked up to me and said, should I get a bear? I would say no, right? No matter who you are, I'd be like, no, a bear is a bad idea. I do think though, that a small fraction, a very small fraction, of all reptile keepers can keep a green iguana or a Nile monitor successfully. And, and so I think it should be allowed. And I love these animals. What I hate is when the wrong people buy these animals. I, I hate it when uninformed and unprepared people buy them because it is the animals and it is the hobby that suffers as a result. So be responsible. If these lizards, especially if a Nile monitor is the right pet reptile for you, seriously, then these videos are not made for you. I, I hope you enjoy them, but uh, you are probably a, a more experienced and more well-funded reptile keeper than I am, and you don't need my advice. If you are watching this video to try to determine if a Nile monitor is the right pet reptile for you, then it is definitely with absolute certainty, not the right pet reptile for you. You know, if you want a great pet monitor, check out Aki's. We got a whole video on them and they're amazing. And they're, they're, they're just like this, but totally reasonable. If you want a big lizard, check out our video on Argentine black and white tegus because they're out of this world amazing. And you know, even if, even if you want a monitor lizard, that's a heck of a lot like this, look into things like Dumeril's monitors. They're not easy, but uh, you know, it, it, it's a monitor that, that swims, it's got this basic body form, it eats really similar things, but they don't bite. Uh, they're marvelous in a lot of ways. Super marvelous. This is a horrible pet reptile. Don't get one, please. As always, like and subscribe. Definitely click that little bell so you get notifications because we've got essentially Essentially every reptile we've ever talked about, and the vast majority of them that we will talk about in the future, are probably more likely to be the right pet reptile for you than this one. So make sure to subscribe and stay tuned. Also we want to thank our patrons at Patreon who have made it possible for us to do two videos a week. We are so thankful to you guys. We've got a lot of features available only to you guys as our way of saying thank you. Uh, if you're interested in becoming a patron, make sure to check out our Patreon. We'll, ha we'll have a link right there. And also in the description. Check those out. We hope to see you real soon. Tell me how you really feel. Do not buy a Nile monitor for anything, please. And upfront costs. What do you think of that, Norbert? I really like you, though. If all Nile monitors were like you, I'd feel very different. Okay? You are a, a kind of a bad ambassador for your kind. I, what I should have here is one Nile monitor latched onto my face, but I appreciate your restraint very much. Good boy. Okay, I'm not giving it a zero. You wanna come back? Can I get you to come back? I would say if you can help it, don't get a whole lot closer than that to his face just because he might not like it. <laughs> that, was that was a good go. shot. <laughs> that was a good shot. Uh, scared me a little.